Welcome to a preview of Macaron, a modern trick-taking card game launching soon on Kickstarter. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Sunrise Tornado Game Studio for providing us with a review copy of this game. All right, Macaron was designed by Tata Wu and features art by Holly Chu and Richard Kim. I do apologize if I got those name pronunciations wrong. This is going to be published by Sunrise Tornado Game Studio. Uh, assuming it gets funded, it's expected to hit Kickstarter later this year, possibly later this month if everything goes smoothly. This card game plays one to five players, with each game taking about half an hour. I would actually say less once people know the, the full mechanics. Uh, the somewhat pasted on theme here is that players are patissiers in French making macaron gift boxes for King Louis' birthday. Due to the fact that the version of Macaron we received is a pre-production copy and does not feature final artwork or components, we did not re uh, record an unboxing video. I do believe that it is on Tabletopia, however, though. Yes, it is. Yep, they, that is part of the ways that they are doing previews of. Now, the components we did receive that I think are going to stay the same are four group boards that are showing one or two macaron types, a central playing board that includes a score track, a bidding track, and a place to track the number of gift box completed by each player each round. There are going to be 52 cards that are split over seven suits. Six of these suits have cards numbered one to seven. The final suit, the chocolate macaron, has cards from one to ten. There are 14 voting tokens, which include one start player token, a marker to match which suits are royal, which is uh, the term for Trump in this game, and which flavor is the allergen. More about the actual mechanics of that later. Now, player components. Now, interestingly, my copy only had enough for four players. Include a betting token, a score token, and a completed box token. Again, what I have are prototypes. I have meeples. I am certain the game is probably not going to come with meeples. So now that we have an idea of what you get, how about you tell us how to play this modern trick-taking card game? All right, so this one is more than you would expect from a trick-taking card game. Like this is, there's there's definitely some complexity and granularity and, and fiddliness to this game. So it's going to take a little bit more to explain than most trick-taking games. So to start the game, you are going to first have to adjust the number of suits, which is the flavors of macarons based on the number of players. You're also going to pick which side of the main board to use. Basically, there's an easy and an advanced side. The advanced side is for longer games that a higher score, and it adds more granularity to the bidding phase, which again, I'll get to that in a minute. So is that a bit like using the, uh, the easy and hard uh, sides of Azul, uh, where it's not a hugely different game, but it adds a little bit more difficulty uh, into, into the, the play? Yeah, I would say so. Especially the, the main thing is if you want to play a long game, you have to use the advanced board because the scoring track's longer. And like I said, it does add a little bit more granularity to a couple of the phases, which I'll describe in a bit. Not a huge change, though. It definitely doesn't feel like playing a different game. Starting a round, you're going to shuffle the deck and the cards are dealt evenly to all players. Now, if you're playing four or more players, you're going to also distribute the voting tokens evenly. Players are then going to look at their cards and pass two cards to one of their opponents, starting with passing to the left and passing to the right. People have seen this in many trick-taking games over the years. So this is nothing new. Once everyone has their hands, their final hands, it's time to determine what the royal group is and the allergen. Now, these are unique concepts to this game in a way. With less than four players, it's really simple. The player to the left of the start player picks the royal group, and the player to the left of them picks the allergen. Now, with two players, note that would go back to the start player. Now, with four or five players, this is where it gets neat, is there's a voting round to make this determination. Now, voting is done with these little voting chips, which are played one at a time in player order. They're placed above or below a specific macaron flavor, with votes above a flavor counting as positive and votes below being negative. Now, after everyone's voted, you flip all your chips over and you do the math. Now, the group of macarons, which are in pairs, that has the highest total, with it, once you've done all the map, becomes the royal group. Then the individual flavor, not group, with the lowest total becomes the allergen. Okay, that's yeah. Well, I mean, it's a it's a flavorful concept to throw into a a trick taking game about food. So yeah. now players do get one final option before the round starts. Now that they know the allergen, they know the royal group. They can bid on how many completed boxes of macarons they will make during the game during the round, sorry. At the end of the round, they're going to get bonus points if they're right. And they're going to lose points if they're wrong. 
Note the bet's optional. So this isn't like, say, spades or wizards, where you have to bet how many tricks you're going to take. Also note that these are only completed boxes. We'll get to why that matters in a minute, because not every trick you take is going to score for you. So playing around a macaron, you are playing a trick-taking game. Starting with the start player, continuing clockwise, everyone's going to play one card. The first card led determines the suit, the flavor for that hand. Every card played after that has to follow the suit, if possible, and the highest card played wins the trick. If a player can't follow suit, they can throw off suit. Non-royal off-suit cards can't win a trick, they're just tossed. Cards from a royal group, though, will steal the trick, with the highest royal card winning the trick. Okay. Now, in addition to this, one of the suits is the allergen. That was determined during that voting round. Any trick taken with an allergen is going to be worth no points because that box of macaron is spoiled by the allergen. Finally, ones and twos are special. So again, every deck goes only from one to seven, except the chocolate goes one to ten. Well, a two negates the allergens present, even if the two comes from the allergen suit. That way, even if there are negative cards there, it's still worth points to you. And a one is worth three completed boxes instead of ones if the one takes the trick. Okay, so it's not, I mean, there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack, but it, it does make a lot of sense. The allergen uh, certainly makes a lot of sense. You, you decided mm -hmm. the allergen of the king, and if the king is allergic to it, he's not going to like the box, so exactly. you waste the entire box. Yep, all makes sense. It's, it's actually, I was impressed by how well they tied in theme uh, something we were talking about earlier on the podcast episode where we were featuring this review was that most trick-taking games don't have a lot of theme. And it was cool to see one that did. Yep. Now, once players have played all their cards, note, you do play every card. Um, you're going to play with a standard four or five player game. You're going to play 13 cards. Sorry, four player game. You're going to play 13 cards, 13 rounds. You're then going to count up your completed boxes. So those are the ones without allergens in them with a bonus for your ones. Then you're going to get points based on the boxes completed. Now, this isn't one-to-one. -one. It's not like getting seven tricks that are completed is seven points. This is important because like, you actually get more points for getting zero tricks than you do for getting one or two tricks. So what you do is you're going to look up on, a, on the board and put your meeple on the spot, and then you're going to look in a column and see how many points you get. So, for example, um, on the easy side of the board, completing three, four, or five boxes is all just worth three points. Whereas, again, the advanced side is a little more granular. Only four and five boxes will get you three points. Right. Now, a standard game of Macaron ends when one player hits 10 points, with the player with the most points at that point winning the game. The game also presents the option to play to 20 or 30 points using that advanced side of the scoreboard. In addition to these rules, there are a full set of solo rules that uses a bot player called Emma. Uh, not not a huge fan of bot players to uh, to play solo, but you know what? Especially these days, there's a lot of drive out there for solo games. So good side. Now it's it's interesting that you know if on your basic side you play to ten, you can only play those longer games on the advanced. Is there anything stopping you from just looping around again on the on the on the scoring track on the simple game? No. Okay. Not really. I like. I don't see any reason to. And and I actually the the base board, if I remember, actually goes up to twenty because again the the game ends when someone gets to ten, but you could go more than ten, right? Right. At ten, it's whoever has the most points. Right. So I don't know. I it it's it, I don't see any reason why not. You could loop. We found a ten point game was just long enough, and enough that now we want to play another ten pointed game. Okay. Well, like I I can't see wanting to play a twenty or thirty. I think I would rather play three 10 point games and one 30 point game. That was at least the feeling we got in the multiple plays we had. Okay. That's good. Good to know. Now, overall thoughts in general, I like trick taking games. I've, I've been playing them as long as I can remember. And I'm always excited to see something new done with this tried and true card game mechanic. And that, to be honest, is what got me to agree to check out this new game because sunrise tornado got a hold of me on Instagram. And I'm like, Oh, Okay, another trick-taking game. That's so much better than just another Cards Against Humanity knockoff. Thank you for at least offering something interesting. And then I looked at their web page. I think it was a Facebook page they sent me to, and I'm like, ooh, this actually looks kind of neat. And I dug into a bit, and I'm like, this looks like it does some stuff that's different. So I wanted to check it out. And the two things that really set this apart from other trick-taking games is the voting system for the royal group and that whole addition of the allergen, a, a punitive suit that changes every round well may or may not change every round yeah, no and that's that's the uh 
the way that that uh, that loss that the negative uh, mm-hmm. changes is nice. I mean, you know, we've got games like uh, Gorus Maximus where the the royal changes uh, mid mid hand even mid hand. Uh, yes. Whereas whereas the the punitive isn't something that normally shifts. So they've they've sort no. of swap that uh the negative moving around as opposed to the positive yeah yeah i really enjoyed that voting system actually like that whole determining the royal group and the allergen round like that's really neat like there are some hard to make decisions like this is one of those where you're staring at your hand going oh man i don't know what should i do and then like you're doing this after you pass to your opponent right so there's another level of you know what two of the cards your opponent has and then your opponent on this side knows what two of your cards are right like there's that whole level like there's a lot of information going in while doing that bid and then once it goes around the table once you're seeing where other people have bid and that's going to make you think even like you're adding another level the the, the brain is spreading out and branching going oh wait they bid on purple why did they bid on purple does that mean they have lots of purples what am i going to do and and that is really interesting and then there's the extra level that the royal is a royal group so in most cases it's actually two of the suits you're voting on two of the flavors because only the chocolate's on its own so i thought that was fascinating because three of the five groups have two different flavors in them so i'm like and then there's the additional rule, which I didn't actually mention earlier, but the allergen flavor can be part of the royal group. So your allergen could also be Trump, which is going to be really hard to not get stuck with those because Trump's going to take tricks you don't want it to take. And I think that's really fascinating. Like there's just so many little things going on in this game. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now, the biggest problem with macaron is the parts I love are in the voting system. And that only exists if you play with four or five players. Like, well, the game's written to play with less, right? And there's even solo rules using Emma. I found you really want at least four people to, to, to get the fun, like to do the thing that's neat in this game. You really need that. I don't think the person on your left just picking a royal group and then the person on their left picking an allergen is nearly as cool as the whole voting thing. It, like, like, you're just losing out. Like, to me, I, I get it. I understand why they want to market for small groups, especially nowadays. I almost say this is a four player only trick taking game. I don't think I would, if I'm down to less players, if I only have two players, I'm going to grab a Fox in the forest. If I only have one player, I'm going to play something like Friday. If I had three players, I'm sure I can't think of one off the top. Maybe I grab Boris Maximus or something. It just, this isn't what I'm going to rush to, but once I hit four or five and then we get to have that voting round, that's when this game shines. All right. Well, good to know. And I mean, I, it's tough. Like even Goris Maximus, uh you want we, more we want the more you know the fact that it plays up to eight players is awesome because those big games of of goris are were, were where the fun was really at yes i agree now the other potential issue i see with this game is that as i just described it like there's a lot going on there's a lot of little things and there's tokens and markers and you're bidding and there's voting like that is a lot of stuff going on for a trick-taking game right like this is so much more than hearts or spades where all you need is a standard deck of playing cards and some way to track score like you're looking at way more stuff here what's royal what's the allergen and a marker to mark those so it's easy to see all of that just means this probably is not a gateway trick-taking game this is definitely not one that i am going to introduce someone to trick-taking to where possible though i did that with my daughter which is part of why i think this is a problem when i say a problem but it's it's a thing and i don't even know if this is a good next step for traditional card game players like i think i'd rather pull out a wizard or a diamonds before breaking this one out if i'm playing with someone who i'm like what's your gaming experience like hey, i played monopolies and hearts i'm like i think i might want to leave macaron in the box for a little bit like this is just more complicated than what you'd expect from oh it's a simple card game this is definitely not just a simple card game right Now, despite the fact I have a preview copy of the game, I got to say I was pleased with the design work that I saw. Again, this may not be finalized, but as far as I know, the card design is. Besides featuring some really appealing looking art, it looks delicious. There's a lot of helpful information on the cards. Uh, for, For one, make the game colorblind accessible and easier to differentiate between the cards. For one, the numbers are clear, like the the big one through seven is huge uh each suit's artwork and the overall color of each suit is unique so you can tell them apart by color but in addition to that there are small unique symbols for each suit showing the flavor so like a blueberry for the blueberry and a a pistachio for the pistachio and then 
They even put a letter on each card group, which is especially useful when trying to figure out which cards in your hand are royal. Once you've determined the royal group, well, there's a thing showing which group each of them are in. Now, I will admit the chocolate and the almond suits could have been differentiated a bit more. In your hand, it's fine, but across the table, they do look a little bit similar. But overall, I was really impressed. Well, and it's always good to see these companies, you know, taking that extra step and looking for ways to make as many people as possible able to play the game, mm -hmm. whether they be, uh, you know, dyslexic or, uh, you know, vision vision issues or whatever the, the issue is, giving them those options to, to, to make that game accessible mm -hmm. is always fantastic. No, I totally agree. So overall, I think it's pretty obvious. I really enjoyed Back Rome. Like, this is way more fun than I thought it was going to be when I signed up. I'm like, yeah, it'll be a trick-taking game. I'm like, no, this is a good trick-taking game. Like, I would honestly say this is better than many of the other modern trick-taking games I've played in the last few years. Um, we mentioned a couple tonight already. Yes, there's more going on, and that might be a problem for people new to trick-taking or playing the first modern trick-taking game after coming from especially the classics. I think that's what I like about it, though that there is so much meat to this. There is so many interesting things happening. Yes, every round of this is going to take longer than a round of Euchre for sure. But like things like that voting system and everything that goes along with it adds a new level of strategy and tactics to a traditional trick-taking game. And I've found I really enjoyed that. It's just a shame that those voting rules only come into play when you play with four or five players. Like I'm wondering if someone out there before this is funded, maybe can come up with a two or three player voting variant or something just to keep that bit of meat into the game. If you're a longtime fan of trick taking games like me, I honestly think you should check this one out. Like watch for this to go live on Kickstarter. I'm a big fan already. I trust me when it goes live, I'm going to be sharing it on my socials. So people know it's live. If you like card games in general and don't mind trick-taking games, you're like, eh, I like card games. Trick-taking is okay. I would recommend giving this a spin. Give, try it out. Maybe play it on Tabletopia to give it a play before you actually dive in. I think there's a lot here to like. Now, if you're not familiar with trick-taking games at all, or if you have very little experience with them, I would actually caution you to stay away from this one for now. Go out, find some other modern trick-taking games, try them, try some diamonds, try a, a fox in the forest, try a few other games to see if you dig that style of play. And if you do, then come back and take a look at Macaron. And the, we've got an Ask episode just about modern trick-taking games that you're welcome to take a look at our <laughs> list of from. Now, for a somewhat more in-depth look at Macaron, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.